Hi again, this is Mike with Revolution Imager. Thanks for watching the video where we're going to show you how to put the Revolution Imager R2 onto a telescope so that you're ready to go out and observe and see what you've been missing with our new uh, Revolution Imager. So uh, the first thing you want to do is get that sticker and plaster that on your telescope, not on the front of the telescope though, uh, the, to let other people know that you have a Revolution Imager. Uh, just kidding you guys. So this is the camera and we have it with the uh, inch and a quarter snoot and the 0.5 reducer. I always recommend starting with that 0.5 reducer on there and as we've covered if you have a fast telescope uh, you might want to have that reducer at the short position. Uh, a regular like we're going to put it on the uh, Evolution 8 telescope from Celestron here. Uh, we're going to use the maximum uh, field reduction uh, so that we can uh, have the widest field of view and see what we've been missing here. So uh, the first thing you want to do is on the back, and, and I'm so sorry, I, even I just forgot what we need to do first. What we need to do first is we need to set the telescope up outside, right? We need to go where we have a clear field of view, and we need to go through the alignment procedure. Um, the most important thing here is to be like a telescope operator, six out of 10. You have to be proficient in operating your telescope so that if you have a, a go-to type of telescope, if you tell it to go to the moon, uh, press moon and it goes and finds the moon and then it counteracts the movement for you. Uh, that's always best if you can do that. And then also, if you've set your revolution up uh, during the day, um, perhaps you want to start with the telescope pointed at a mailbox or a treetop or a power pole, something like that, so that when you look through the back of the telescope, and I don't have any eyepiece right here right now, but you'd have an eyepiece right here, and you're like, hey, look at that, there's the mailbox, right? So at that point, you would put the imager in, right? And then uh, put those little lock screws down. And then we have the uh, wire harness right here, the uh, Frankenstein cable goes right on the back of the telescope or the uh, imager, right like that. And then this is the uh, cord for the monitor. Now, the uh, um, Evolution Telescope here, we have the Evo Revo upgrade kit on here, which is super nice because now everything is gonna go with the telescope. I'm gonna put the monitor uh, on the Evo Revo upgrade right there. But uh, many telescopes have some sort of piggyback uh, adapter mechanism uh, to hold the monitor. And if you uh, have kids, sometimes it's easier to have the monitor not attached to the telescope. Sometimes kids like to hold on to the monitor. Or we have, it comes with a little uh, tabletop uh, um, a device that some people have even uh, bent this to make it uh, uh, fit around the telescope. This is a, a, a light metal material and it has that same quarter 20 thread. So again, many different options. There's no one right answer here, just whatever fits uh, how you're going to be using it. Um, and then we have the power. Uh, we um, typically put a little piece of Velcro uh, on here or you can put the power, it comes in that little uh, satchel uh, or you can put the power down here. Uh, we usually put a little piece of Velcro, you can see right there, and the Velcro goes right there. And then we have all of the cords. We have the power cord that goes directly to the back of the camera, right there. And then we have the power cord that goes to the monitor, right, right down here. And then when I'm looking at the monitor, I can see that we have one more yellow cord, which is the signal. It's very similar to if, you've, uh, if you're an old guy. Uh, like me, and if you've ever worked on a car before, on a, on a car, the old cars before uh, fuel injection, you had uh, uh, fuel or fire. On the Revolution Imager, you have power and signal. Those are the two things, power and signal at the camera, power and signal at the monitor. So at that point, um, knowing that the telescope is pointed at the mailbox or the treetop, whatever you found during the day is always the easiest way to start this. Uh, I'm gonna turn the imager on and I'm gonna have an image uh, through the telescope. We're inside here, so we're not gonna be able to see anything. Um, and then with the Schmidt Cassegrain, typically I'm gonna go seven turns counterclockwise. Remember, um, there's two things to get an image on the Revolution Imager. There's focus and there's exposure. Now if I'm focusing and I don't see enough, this is actually a, a, a very good uh, range of focus because if it was all white like that, maybe I wouldn't see if I was in focus or if it was all black, then I wouldn't be able to see that I was in focus. So uh, it's a balancing act. You know, if you imagine like a seesaw, you have to get the camera within a range of being able to find uh, focus. And you can do that again by going to the uh, uh, hand control, the um, UTC controller, that early in the morning trying to figure this out. 
I'm gonna press the center button, and if I didn't have that gray area, I could go here to custom mode, press OK, which is the enter button, the center button, and then I could go to manual, and I would find a shutter speed. Now you can see here I'm too overexposed, and then if I go to a faster shutter speed there, I'm too underexposed. So I wanna have some sort of uh, mid-range grayish area where I, I'm gonna be able to see that I'm in focus. And then w again, with the Schmidt Cassegrain, from a 25 uh, or a 32 millimeter-ish eyepiece, I have to go about seven turns counterclockwise. So I went two, three, four, five, six, seven, would be approximately if I had previously had a 25 millimeter eyepiece here, then with a Schmidt Cassegrain, typically about seven turns, seven and a half turns counterclockwise. And then I'm gonna begin to resolve some image that is focused uh, on the screen there. So that's a great way to begin to see uh, how to operate through the telescope. It's always a balance of focus and exposure. And then even as the telescope cools off at night, once you uh, have focused on a star, uh, maybe you'll come back 10 minutes later and as uh, the temperature here in California, it's gone from, you know, 70 to a freezing 68. No, just kidding. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so as the temperature cools off, the whole telescope will contract uh, a very, very small amount, but that will affect the focus. So maybe every 10 or 15 minutes you have to touch the focus, make sure that's in focus. And then the camera on the exposure side, there's a world of information. If you go to revolutionimager.com under the How Do I tab, you might be there right now, uh, there's a How Do I uh, uh, image for deep sky objects, or How Do I uh, image for uh, the moon and planets, and that's gonna talk more about the exposure. But roughly what you're gonna do is you're gonna change the shutter speed to get a good image, and then if you want, you can go to this other feature called DNR, which lets you stack average up to six of those images on top of each other, which improves the contrast, improves the brightness. It's uh, truly uh, magic. And then from there, oftentimes, uh, once I do the shutter speed and then the, and then the DNR, I'll go to this thing called picture adjust because depending upon what I'm looking at in a galaxy or nebula, I might wanna make the edges a little bit brighter or I might wanna dim down uh, the brightness of the core and then I can go and I can adjust the contrast. The contrast is very uh, uh, great for city dwellers because that gives you the ability to almost dial out uh, the moon glow. You can um, uh, pick a black point almost with that uh, and let you see uh, deep sky objects uh, miraculously from light polluted skies. Again, just briefly touching on a lot of these ideas here. Hope that you found this video educational. Um, and as always, subscribe somewhere down here-ish. I've, I've been told. And the next video uh, someday soon will be over here. If you haven't liked this on Facebook yet, uh, we do star parties and all, all that kind of stuff locally. And there's pictures that we put up there. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash revolution imager. And also I own Orange County Telescope. So if you're into telescopes, uh, maybe you are. Uh, <laughs> feel free to check us out uh, however you like. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day.